Hello there. I'm Dylan. And I'm Nanya. We are the co-founders at Living Spec. I'm based in Phoenix. And I'm from Belgrade. And together we've been working remotely for more than 15 years on various problems, and we've learned a lot along the way. Back in 2004, I helped start the Dojo Toolkit, an open source JavaScript framework, and my co-founder Alex and I wanted to define what Dojo should do, what it should become. But we both like to write, we both like to touch, so we couldn't sit there and watch the other person type. So we downloaded like the first collaborative editor at the time, which was Subbeat the Edit for the Mac, and we sat there with our laptops back to back at a coffee shop in Mountain View, California. And we sat down and we refined a list of 20 to 30 features and use cases. And we were like, well, this is cool, let's publish it. And the amazing thing was about two years later, everything we had published in that list existed in some form in Dojo. When I think about uh, a decent example to, to give, it's like um, I've been working in this large enterprise type of setup. And uh, we always got the specs from like the business side, which were nice use case models and whatnot, which came back to the development team, to the project managers and to, you know, down the pi pipeline in general. And everyone rewrote them in their way. So like the project managers did some Excel, uh, the developers started, started writing on walls. It's like everyone wrote their own, their own uh, the information in their own way. So it was, a, it was a challenge trying to put the pieces together and then put them back into the initial system where the information, of course, belongs because you have to kind of keep track of what's done and what's, you know, what, what, where are we going next. Yeah. I imagine lots of Excel spreadsheets in that scenario getting passed around. <laughs> yeah, and, and whiteboards. Oh, yes. <laughs> There's a recent study done by McKinsey that said poor coordination is killing companies' abilities to adapt and that roughly half of engineering production or productivity is lost by poor coordination. Um, this happens in many different ways. You know, sometimes you're sitting down and you're ready, to, you're in the zone, you're ready to write code. You're like, wait, what am I building? Why am I building this? Is this the right version? What kinds of things get in your way, Dominic? It's mostly, uh, where do I write this down? How do I write this down? Which page does it belong to? What type of language or what type of template, whatnot? And the only thing you really want to do is get the idea out of your head and you're like immersed in the details of, of you're, you're immersed in the mechanics. Where does it go? How does it, will it get rejected and whatnot? I always found it was which Google doc is the right doc <laughs> or, and you, you have like five or six documents that all say final and you don't know which oh, yeah. one is actually final, right? So there's a lot of obstacles to get in the way of something as simple as just writing it down. But to me, writing it down is why I've been successful over the many years working remotely. So there's the inertia, right? Like, hey, um, where do I write it down? Do I have to write it down? Can I just tell this person the thing? Can I just put it in Slack? Can I just talk about it on Zoom, right? Um, well, the point is it needs to be written down. That's like the, 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 the thing you have to start from. So why not remove that obstacle? Why not just write it down anywhere, you know, get the pro pro process started and then figure out where we're gonna go next, right? Right, well, and I've been at some companies where they're afraid to share th something that's not perfect. And they're afraid because someone's going to immediately tell them it's wrong or that they're being stupid or that it's imperfect. But that, that makes things really slow to get anything done. That process is kind of geared, it's set up like that, isn't it? Because you have a right way as defined by a person or a team. So you have to fit in with the right way and then you, it just gets in the way of, the, of what needs to get done. It's in, the, the information needs to actually flow and then the information needs to be taken down as opposed to, you know, judged for what, it's, for what it is on the first, in the first instance. I feel like as developers, GitHub did us two really good favors here. They came up with the um, draft so you can say, hey, I'm gonna put this code here, don't judge it, it's just there. You know, maybe you can give me feedback, but don't judge it yet, it's not done. And then the whip tag, you know, the work in progress. Hey, I'm working in progress, and I think probably like 90% of all um, commits now have the word whip, or the, the phrase whip in them to indicate that like, hey, don't judge it yet, man. And sometimes it's little indicators that really help us achieve that. Yeah. Um, I find sometimes things are slow, you know, if it takes a couple minutes to find the place you need to add the bit of information, you might not write it down, or which system you need to write it down within, or yeah. um, just not knowing like who to share information with, or why, or whose opinion needs to be heard on some of this stuff. So these are some of the problems that we feel 
uh, need to be solved really well, and it's why we're actually working on a startup to solve some of these problems. You don't have to use our startup to solve them. We just think that it's a really important set of problems to solve, um, and that's why we're on this journey. So this is a screenshot. What's going on here? Well, we had feedback from a customer of ours, and they were asking if we can improve what they referred to as user management. We didn't have the concept of user management at the time, at least not the way they said it. So we just got an email from them and we imported it into our system and we put it up in front of the team so that we can actually figure out what we're going to do with the, with the feedback. So the feedback is just raw email as far as I Recall. Yeah, I might have like removed some bold and added some yeah. bullet points when I captured this info, but really it was just raw info, unfiltered, you know, shared from someone who didn't really have a strong opinion. They just gave us their opinion. I mean, they, maybe their opinion was strong, but it wasn't necessarily like, go build this now. It was like, hey, you guys should do something like this. And so we took that information and we said, well, let's start to iterate that into something we can actually think about because we can't tackle all of this at once, but we would, it is an interesting problem. It's the classic like Google Docs problem, which is you're invited to a Google document and of course you're logged in with the wrong user, you know? And so you have to figure out which user the document was shared with and switch browsers or switch windows or whatever to switch to that person. So what if we could do better than that? And so we started to write down like very top level use cases. like. The user gets invited to a document at a different email address than their current account. What can you do with that, right? And, and sort of just kind of split it down into really easily digestible, understandable statements, which it's not done. We're not going to go write code based on this, but it gets us thinking about the problem and thinking about which parts of the problem we could actually solve right now. Well, yeah, I mean, and also to to reiterate, a lot of the things that we received aren't really use case format friendly. You know, we received just statements from a person. So um, then you kind of iterate and we get to something like what we see now, which was support both password and OAuth for the same email address, which is more a, of a formal format. So it's more of what you, you know, what you expect in, in, as an outcome. But the important thing for us, we get there. We don't start there. We kind of slowly get towards that point. We don't kind of, this isn't something we wanted in a specific form and it just worked for, for us and as we develop the, the product. So, you know, then we pick up the, the, the use case and then we start iterating on it and, and everything else that we received as feedback. I mean, what's cool about this is it seems pretty easy, right? Like none of this is difficult. It just takes time to really take what someone said and start to slowly think about it in the smaller scope and more specific context, right? And so... Yeah, and what's interesting in general is what you do when you get to this point, right? When you get to the point where you actually had un unformatted, unformal text, now you have formal text, so, you know, where we get go next is like where our product is, what, where we, we hope our product will help people. Right, and that's connecting ideas together in the relevant place. So we've written this use case in one spot, but it might impact multiple parts of our product or our specification or our documentation. And so one of the things we feel is really important is to be able to easily connect things together, link them in the right place. So yeah, someone wrote something down over here, but let's put it also over here, or at least connect them together so people can find the information that you've shared in one place. I mean, you don't know to begin with what a thing might impact, do you? You start and then it evolves and then you iterate and then it becomes something bigger than you hoped for. So you should be able to kind of, you know, link it to multiple places, allow it to naturally grow as opposed to kind of, um, you know, putting it into a specific place and then just... Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of like the basis for the World Wide Web as a whole, as a principle, right? Or the Zettelkasten uh, productivity methodology, which is just make it really easy to connect ideas together. Yeah. To me, that like maps to the way our mind works, you know, connecting our, our thoughts together. But now we're sort of connecting multiple brains together, and it, it's kind of interesting when that happens. So for us, there's a lot that you can do with just really simple improvements in your workflow. Um, so, you know, if you just write things down, you can get things done more efficiently. I like to say, things that are not written down never get done. Things that are written down at least have a chance of getting done or might get done. And part of that is because we, we start to, like, um, fix some of those obstacles we had before. 
Well, yeah, I mean, it's important to accept imperfection. It's, it's important to allow the natural process, the natural human process, which is messy, right? You write things down. It's not going to be pretty. It never is. You kind of just get your ideas out there. You, you have to get them out there because at least you see them in front of you. You can make judgments based on what you, what you wrote as opposed to keeping everything in your head and then trying to remember all the bits and pieces that need to go together. It doesn't work. I mean, it rarely works. So, you know, removing the, remo uh, accepting imperfection, removing like the, the, this need to have everything perfect to begin with is really important. It's a really important driver, you know, for yeah. the success of, of, of a project or a subsystem or whatever you, you prefer to call it. Right. And really having a system that allows you to get your information out of your head and into a system as fast as writing it down or typing it into a scratch pad app is really key. If it takes you like three minutes to find the spot you want to enter something, you're going to give up. You're going to say, well, this is stupid. I'm just going to go back to Word or go back to pieces of paper. So you'd have like a streamlined, efficient process that doesn't judge you and it helps you get your job done more effectively. And then you can embrace this messiness and iterate on it over time and know with confidence that you're not losing information along the way. Yep. Cool. Nothing to add. Well, thank you so much, and let us know if you have any questions. Cheers. Bye-bye.